Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So I'm going to talk to you today about the 10 unrealistic relationship expectations. Uh, yeah, let's do it after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So the 10 unrealistic relationship expectations. The first one came from something that I read on Facebook, okay? And I wanted to punch the dude in the face. So basically the story is very short and simple, but it was very unrealistic. So he basically said that he's been with his girl for a number of years. They end up having a child together and now she has her tiger stripes, her stretch marks. And he wondered if he's being unrealistic because, number one, she just had the baby three months ago, okay? So after three months, he's not feeling attracted to her any longer. And so he went to her and basically told her he's not feeling that he's not feeling attracted to her any longer. And so could she, number one, agree to him paying to surgery for her? And number two... If he if he's not feeling attracted to her, should he actually stay with her? Dude, first of all, she just had your little ugly baby. Yeah, I ain't dogging out the baby. Don't come for me on that. I'm, it's just a, something that I say because he got this ugly behavior right now. She just had your baby three months ago. And you probably didn't say nothing about her big old belly because you knew that it was temporary, right? So, <laughs> I'm just very disgusted with this guy, uh, which is why I can't even put my words together. Because, really, dude, I get it that you're not attracted to stretch marks, per se. I get that. Okay, cool. But what did you think her having a child for you was going to do? Now, granted, there are some people out there who do not get stress marks. I mean, like one of my sisters, both of her kids, she got like three or four stretch marks. I wasn't so fortunate. For me, I got my tiger stripes in month nine. So I ain't gonna lie, I thought that I was absolutely going to get away with not having my motherly tiger stripes. But I, but I got them. I don't particularly like them. However, I love my baby and it's a part of life. So, <laughs> what some people were saying in the comments was, girl, let him pay for the surgery and then leave his butt. That is just very unrealistic. Let me, get, let me get down to it. It's unrealistic because it took her nine plus months for her body to stretch out for your child. It's going to take her up to two years for her body to bounce back. And they ugly right now, the stretch marks, meaning they ugly right now. Okay, I get that. But it's only been three months. She probably have not been working out again. She probably have not been toning up that stomach. And, you know, unrealistic for her to bounce back in three months. Boy, bye. She just had your little ugly baby. Boy, bye. Boy, bye. Unrealistic. The second unrealistic expectation in your relationship is that you're only in a good relationship if you guys do not argue. That is not true at all. Arguments are actually healthy for your relationship. Now, I'm not saying that you need to have an argument every single day for it to be a healthy relationship. No, but just know the arguments are absolutely going to come because you are two separate people coming together in this one world. So because you are two separate people, you are not going to think alike because you're two separate people with two separate minds, two separate thought processes, two separate things that make you feel good and fuzzy and warmy about the relationship. It's not going to be the same way for your partner. It's unrealistic to think that your relationship is only good if you guys don't argue because, again, arguments are healthy for you. If they're done the right way. So you have to argue effectively, not name call and not punch holes in the wall, not curse each other out. No, that's not the healthiness that I'm talking about. You should be able to confront and address the issue without feeling like, oh, my God, I can't speak up. Mm -mm. So. 
unrealistic expectations. Arguments occur. It's normal. They're healthy. The third unrealistic relationship expectation is that just because now I picked him up or you picked her up, you got him, you solidify the relationship, you guys are now BFFs, boyfriend and girlfriend, or maybe you engaged, maybe you guys got married. And guess what? Now you feel just because you got this person, I ain't got to do nothing to keep them. Uh, sorry, boo-boo. Yes, you do. All of the stuff that you did in order to get them is the very thing you must continue to do to keep them. So we all get bored. We all get bored. We all want to keep up with the facade, okay, facade, and fantasy of the relationship. Now, am I saying that this is going to happen every single solitary day? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is, if you was a person that always brought her flowers when you guys were dating, guess what? She still want those flowers when you guys are married. She still wants them flowers when you guys solidify the relationship. They might scale back, but don't stop doing that. If you guys used to travel all the time, guess what? Your partner still want to travel. If you guys did, you know, a lot of adventures, guess what? Your partner still want to get some more adventures under their belt with you. Because now they got somebody to do these things with. All of the things that you did to get said person, you must keep those things up. And it's unrealistic to believe that your relationship is still going to thrive and move forward if you stop these things. It won't. Something is going to fall apart. And this is when you hear people say, oh, the spark is gone. It's because you stopped doing the very things that you did to get the person. All those surprises that you did in the dating stages and now you got this person, now you stopped them. What did you think was going to happen? They're bored out of their mind now. Unrealistic expectation number four. Ladies, this one is for you. If I have a child for him, girl, he's going to stay with me and we're going to make our little family work. Nope. Sorry to bust your bubble. There have been plenty of women out there who've been through this. Just ask a few of the people that you know. Just because you have a child with that guy does not mean he's going to stay around for you. And sometimes, let's be real, not even for the child. And then you have put yourself in the situation to become a single parent. All because you thought having his child was going to keep him. No, 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 no. It doesn't. That doesn't mean that you guys are going to stay together because you, you have half of his DNA within you, meaning that you're pregnant with his child. Mm -mm. Don't work like that. And sometimes when the actual duties and responsibilities rear their head, as in you have this person's child, the real sucker show up and run for the heels. Never to be seen or heard from again. You don't even have this person's social security number where you can just slide in the courtroom and get you some <laughs> and get you some child support. Can't even do that. Having a baby with a guy who does not want to have a child getting pregnant on purpose in order to keep him doesn't mean you're going to keep him, sis. I know as soon as we get married, guess what? He's going to actually do all of the things that he wasn't doing in the dating stages or she don't work like that the person that you date is the person you will marry so if there are things about him or about her that you don't like before you get married think real deep and hard if you still want to get married to that person because those are the things that are going to exponentially piss you off the more you stay with them. If you cannot deal with it in the dating stages, in the engagement stage, do not marry him. Do not marry her. Because that same person, those same things that you hated, those same things that you thought was just going to go away because the person said, I do, they don't. They still right there knocking you upside your head. And you're the only one who's feeling the effects because 
Your choice was to continue through with the marriage. And so all of the issues and problems that you had before you got married, they still there after you say I do. Think about it. If you cannot deal with them before, you will not be able to deal with them after. The six unrealistic relationship expectation. This one is for you, my fellas. If I shut her out or, or ignore her, she will want me even more. Totally false. <laughs> totally false. The more you shut her out, the more you ignore her, you are setting yourself up because the only thing you are doing is showing her is that, guess what? The more he does this to me, the easier it is for me to walk away and live without him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going on, bruh. Maybe you haven't thought about it like that. But the more you shut her out, the more you shut her down, the more you release the communication, the more she sees that she can live without you. You're painting the picture. You are the artist. You're painting the picture for her. And she like, you know what? I actually can do this by myself because guess what? I've been doing it by myself. Because he always shut down. He always shut me out. And I got to take care of everything by myself anyway. I got to figure it all out. You teaching her how to live without you. The more times you do that. And especially if they are for extended periods of time that you are shutting down and shutting around. Think about it. The seventh unrealistic expectation within your relationship will be that because we are together, I will always be number one in his life or in her life. That's just not true. As much as we want to always be our partner's top priority, life gets in the way. And sometimes you're not. Especially when you guys have young children or if a parent or sibling is sick, especially if you were the primary. You're going to have to take a back seat as the partner, as the understanding partner. In this season, you are not number one. You are not the priority. And a lot of parents out there can absolutely <laughs> hear what I'm saying. You want to be. You want to put your spouse first. You want to. But that toddler can't do nothing by themselves. They can't feed. They, can, they, they can't make the food. They can feed themselves. Or maybe you got an infant. They can't do nothing. You are the primary. So your partner, this is this is that season that you got to do. You, hey, bruh, you got to take care of some things by yourself. It ain't going to always be that way. But there will be seasons in your relationship where you will not be the primary, pers primary person and the primary focus of your spouse. Because relationships just ebb and flow, the ebb and flow, the ebb and flow, ebb and flow. That's part of it. The eighth unrealistic relationship expectation is that your partner is supposed to make you happy. Mm -mm. Happiness is a choice. I say it time and time again because it's true. Happiness is a choice that you must make no matter what situation you are in, no matter what's coming toward your way. No matter what valley you are in, happiness is a choice. Just like being sad is a choice. Just like being super rude is a choice. Just like taking all of your anger and frustrations out on everybody else is a choice. Happiness is no different. It's a choice that you must make every day. And some days it's easier. But those days that you're down in the valley, those are the days where happiness is going to be super hard to pull off. But it is a choice. Everybody don't have to know your business. Everybody don't have to know that you and your spouse is fighting. Everybody don't have, you know what I mean? It's a choice. It's a choice. And it's not your partner's responsibility to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. 
make yourself happy. Your partner adds too, but you choose to make yourself happy. Whether your partner pissed you off, whether y'all just got in an argument, whether they say it's something where you wanted to rip their diggity dog on head off. Happiness is a choice. The ninth unrealistic expectation within your relationship is that just because it's unnatural for you to love him or her the way that they want you to love them, you think that you guys are not compatible. You don't think that you're made for each other. But that doesn't have to be true. It doesn't have to be the case at all. The more you practice to give your love and affection to your partner the way that they want it, the better and more intimate your relationship will be with each other. Because listen, if you are loving your partner the way that they want to be loved, and they are loving you the way that you want to be loved, you guys can't lose. You can only win at that relationship. Absolutely, that's the only way it can work out. That's the best way it can work out. You making your partner the top priority for the most part. For the most part, they're the top priority. And you're loving them and appreciating them and showing them the affection the way that they want it. And then on the flip side, they're doing the exact same thing for you. Y'all relationship is basically rock solid. And can't nobody come in between you guys unless you guys let them. The more you focus on your relationship, the happier you will be. You will be able to cut down on a lot of that cheating, whether it's physical cheating or emotional cheating. Because you're actually focusing on your partner. And your partner is focusing on you. And you're not letting all of these third and fourth and fifth parties come into your relationship. It's all about y'all too. The 10th unrealistic relationship expectation is if he or she loves me, they won't hurt me. And sis, bruh, as much as I would love that one to be true, it's just not because we are all human and we are going to mess up at some point in our relationships. We are going to hurt our spouse and our partner and our mate some point in our relationship and not that you're trying to do it on purpose it's just a part of life it's a part of the relationship it's a part of the growth process it's a part of you being able to have an open conversation about the things that made you feel a certain way and the things that you guys want to change and what you're going to work on and what you're going to grow towards and through. So what unrealistic relationship expectation do you have? I would absolutely want to read it down in the comment section below. And how did you overcome that unrealistic relationship expectation? I absolutely want to know because this is some of the things that make me thrive and that makes me better because this is not a monologue here on I Love Me Me Me. This is absolutely a dialogue and all of these tips and tools are going to help each and every one of us to decrease that divorce rate because that's exactly what we're trying to do here. To